Hey, Lauren here from Dominion Landing Center's expert financial, optimalfinance.ca. Check out this question I got. In terms of income, how do lenders qualify you for a mortgage? I think it's really, really important to understand that depending on the lenders that you're going to use, there are going to use different ways. But let's just talk on the A side, A lenders, banks, credit unions, uh, monoline lenders, everything else. There is a certain criteria in terms of which they will look at income and they will look at income in terms of your salary. If you have part-time income, they'll want two years average. If there's commission income, they want two years average. If you guarantee full-time hours and it's hourly, they'll use that. So basically whatever your income is, what they will allow is they will allow certain debts to your income as a ratio, okay? So there's two factors. One is called gross debt service ratio. Okay, so gross debt service ratio and basically what that is, is your shelter costs relative to your income. So what are your shelter costs? Your shelter costs are your mortgage payments, okay? So whatever mortgage that you're going to be getting into that we put that in there and we also have sometimes if you have a condo you have maintenance fees so maintenance fees would be another factor of shelter okay the other thing that concerns to the home is say property tax so property tax will be factored into that as well and the other thing one other thing that we have to use is heating costs okay so and all lenders will use different sorts of heating costs relative to the size of the actual property so it will vary from lender to lender a lot of times and when we do a pre-approval, I will ask, you know, what are you looking for? Are you looking for a condo? Are you looking for a house? Which area and everything else? Because I have to do assumptions of what the pro property tax will be on the based on the type of property and the area that you're looking in, as well if it's a condo, what type of maintenance fees? Is heat going to be included in those maintenance fees or not going to be included in those maintenance fees? So generally what they'll do from a lender standpoint is they'll look at all that shelter cost can be about 39% of your total debt. 39% of your total debt. That's what they're looking at. Hey, Lauren, listen, I also have a car loan. Okay. Is that going to be a factor? Well, it's definitely a factor. It may not be a factor in terms of what, how much more you would qualify or qualify for less because you have a car loan. But generally what they'll do is they'll take all that GDS, that shelter cost that I talked about, plus any additional debts that you might have. Let's say it's a car loan on top of that. That can be up to 44 percent of your total income now i'm making some assumptions here i'm not going to bring in credit into the issue but let's assume credit is okay and there's there's not an issue there so generally what we're looking at 39 percent of your total income of your sh shelter cost relative to your shelter cost all your debt plus the shelter costs can be up to 44% of the debt to your income that's kind of the max that we're looking at now other factors are going to change this is if you have a 20% down payment, there's some latitude, there's some leeway because it's no longer anything less than a 20% down payment is an insured mortgage. It has to be insured through Sagan, CMHC, or Canada Guarantee. And that is an insurance that's paid by the bank on, uh, on your behalf, added into your mortgage, and allows you to buy a home with less than 20%. So those restrictions are very, very strict. They, they cannot make exceptions on those, those ratios because it's the insurer two sets of approvals the lender approval and the insurer is approval and it has to follow the insurer guidelines once you have a 20 percent down payment though there's no longer the insurer now depending on the lender there's flexibility so they might look at what your net worth is um, your credit other things like that to allow those ratio exceptions to go higher and that's why sometimes you might get a pre-approval but that pre-approval that you got might not be the ceiling because they will never give you an exception on a pre-approval and different lenders will allow have a little bit more flexibility relative to whoever that lender is some very little flexibility some they have very significant flexibility those are factors that are going to determine it you know how much money you can borrow so that is the process now rule of thumb used to be that you know used to say okay four and a half times your income five times your income sometimes four times your income now where interest rates are it's generally between four four and a half right now depending on the lender depending on the down payment that would be the maximum mortgage plus then whatever you have as a down payment on top of that that would equal your purchase price roughly but I suggest if you have any questions about what that ceiling would be or what type of exceptions we could be reach out to your mortgage professional go through everything in detail and come up with that plan and that way you know going into it okay what options there are hopefully this helps any questions please don't hesitate to reach out feel free to make your comments and please subscribe I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next video